Number 10, Hulk 2099. This is the only Hulk on this list that is not a Bruce Banner. No, this version of the Hulk is a guy named John Eisenhart. He was a corporate lawyer for big movie studios who went to manipulate a group called the Knights of Banner, who were a cult-like group of warriors who followed the ideologies of Bruce Banner. John was going to gain the rights for their name in order to make a movie about them, all while giving them nothing in return. He turns them into this corporation called Sweet Dreams, thinking they'll be brought in peacefully, but it doesn't go that way. The only Knight of Banner who survives, a kid, goes to a gamma machine, but John saves the kid, pushing him out of the way and being blasted with gamma radiation. John can turn into the Hulk whenever he wants. He has a super strong prehensile tongue, and he is much more beast-like with massive claws. He is just as powerful as the regular Hulk, but unfortunately, his comics were not popular enough to last more than 12 issues. Maybe he'll get a resurgence, I don't know. And at number nine, it's Age of Apocalypse Hulk. A world where the megalomaniacal apocalypse rose to power and mutants rule mercilessly while humans are treated like cattle. This version of Bruce Banner originally betrayed mankind, but after his experiments turned him into the Hulk, he fought for humans once again. This version of the Hulk starts off as the Grey Hulk, but is referred to as Thing until he saves Tony Stark, Gwen Stacy, and Victor Von Doom from a gamma nuke that he created that inadvertently goes off, forcing his transformation from gray to Green Hulk. Now this guy is pretty much an equal to his normal 616 self, but once Weapon X becomes the ruler of this earth, this Hulk is able to go toe to toe with him, shrugging off attacks and giving a hell of a fight for the crazy powerful mutant. And at number 8, Zombie Hulk. Marvel Zombies isn't really a future story. Like it sort of becomes one, but it isn't when it starts. Time is relative, so look. Basically, in the story, eventually the zombie Galacti, as in those zombified heroes who consumed the Silver Surfer and Galactus and gained the power cosmic, travel out into the universe and begin consuming worlds and galaxies. So much so that they consume everything until nothing is left. As you can imagine, that's the kind of thing that may take a while. Long enough to be considered the future? Mm -hmm. I shall allow you to debate below. This Hulk was a lead consumer in the team of cosmically powered zombie superheroes and villains. So much so that when they ran out of people to consume, Zombie Thanos blamed Hulk for eating more than his fair share, to which Zombie Hulk decided he had enough of Thanos and put him out of commission. Number 7, Earth 928 Iron Man. Earth 928 is widely accepted as the main continuity for Earth 2099. This is the same one that Miguel O'Hara, the main Miguel anyways, aka Spider-Man Hails from. The sad reality is that in this continuity, there isn't really a future Iron Man to speak of. What we do learn about Tony Stark's future here is that the Doom of 2099 has dealt with Stark technology before, and that there is basically no alternate Iron Man within scanning distance of Flipside. Flipside appears in Spider Man 2099, issue number 29, from the 90s, and appears to be scanning for copies of heroes of old so that it can basically copy their traits and abilities, adopting them to become a copy of them itself. Instead of running into any Earth 928 Iron Man though, Flipside ends up running into Miguel and becomes a copycat of Spider-Man 2099 instead. So like I said, as far as we know, there is no Iron Man 2099 in the main 2099 reality. There was a future for Tony, but we don't really know about it. We just know that he was there until he wasn't. Number 6, Stark Fujikawa. While Iron Man of Earth 928 appears to be dead, there is also the existence in this future of the Stark Fujikawa organization, one of the main corporations that rules over the future Earth, along with such powerful companies as Alchemex. While Tony Stark is not among the powerful heads of the company and is not the future CEO, presumed to be dead on Earth 928, in the alternate 2099 future reality of Earth 96099, Iron Man's likeness at least does live on. In this reality, Iron Man's likeness is used in advertising for the Stark Fujikawa organization, implying that Tony's future was somewhat tied to the company. At least, like I said, in this alternate 2099 reality, which isn't the main 2099 reality, but yeah, there are lots of alternate 2099 timelines. It's confusing. Although once again, we still don't really know the fate of Tony Stark even here, where his name and likeness still seem to reappear, but the rest is a mystery. Number 5, Iron Man 2099. There are actually multiple Iron Man 2099s out there, but one of the most well-known ones is Dr. Sonny Frisco, who first appeared in the 2015 Secret Wars event, making his very first appearance in Secret Wars 2099 issue number 1. Well, 2099 is a future reality that has been around for some time in the comics. Dr. Sonny 
Frisco wouldn't appear until later in its continuity. Or a continuity, really. This also, once again, is not the main 2099 continuity. In fact, the 2099 reality actually has multiple different continuities. As I said, it's a lot, it's confusing, but just stick with me here. Frisco's Iron Man hails from one of the fringe continuities known as Earth 23291. Sony Frisco, however, would later become displaced to the reality of Earth 616, following the destruction and recreation of the multiverse as a result of the Secret Wars event. Like Tony Stark of Earth 616, Frisco is also a genius who built his own suit of armor and was a member of the 2099 Avengers originally brought together by the CEO of Alchemex, Tyler Stone. At least, you know, in that alt 2099 reality. Number 4, MC2 Tony Stark. In the alternate reality of Earth 982, known as MC2, and not to be confused with the 2099 reality of Earth 928, even though those numbers are very similar, Iron Man ends up retiring. This Tony has a life similar to his 616 counterpart in most ways, with only a few differences between them. Namely, that Tony Stark in this reality decided to retire after an epic battle on an alternate Earth, which claimed the lives of many of his friends and fellow heroes, and left Scarlet Witch in a comatose state as a result of her sealing the portal between those two worlds. This devastating battle prompted Tony to retire, although he would seek out someone to carry on his legacy before doing so. Number three. Breaker of Worlds. The Breaker of Worlds Hulk first appeared in a kind of side story within the Immortal Hulk storyline. In an alternate timeline, the Immortal Hulk becomes possessed by the one below all, who went rampaging until the end of time and the end of this iteration of the multiverse. He has destroyed everything, literally everything. He has defeated Franklin Richards, Galactus, all the cosmic entities, and he shattered planets and crushed stars with his bare hands. The story itself follows an alien that had explored out trying to find out if anything was left in the universe. And there wasn't. This alien is living in the ninth cosmos, meaning the ninth version of the multiverse after the immortal Hulk slash the one below all destroyed the last version. This new ninth multiverse is in tatters though. The one below all Hulk has consumed the souls of every being he has destroyed, bolstering his own power enough so that he is planet sized and just flies around like a living curse, ending all things in existence until there is nothing left. Ever. Luckily, the alien sent a warning far into the past to the present time. The Breaker of Worlds is what happens when the One Below All wins, and it's not good. Coming in at number two is Space Punisher Hulk. This version of the Hulk in the really awesome Space Punisher story is a four-armed, 30-foot tall murderous monstrosity. He completely took out the Fantastic Four, he bit Sabretooth in half, took off Deadpool's head and threw him out into space, and he completely decimated a group of six Watchers, as in the race that Watu the Watcher is a part of. Now if you don't know, the Watchers are sort of on par in power to Galactus, so yes, this is pretty impressive. The future space version of the Hulk is more like an exoskeleton with Bruce Banner contained within the Hulk's chest. But they are still separate entities, allowing Punisher to end the life of Bruce Banner, which in turn allows the Hulk to just jump off into space and leave everyone alone. It's intense, it's really weird, it's extremely brutal as you'd expect from a Punisher story, and we love it. And coming in at number one is Maestro. If we are talking about alternate future versions of the Hulk, you'd be just a big ol' silly Billy if you thought we weren't gonna talk about the evil ruler of dystopia, the possible future version of the Hulk, Maestro. Maestro is the far future ruler of a mega city that rose up after the events of a nuclear war. After being exposed to so much extra radiation, he gained extra strength and over time became more and more intelligent. He had powered up enough to be double the strength of the base Hulk and just as smart as Bruce Banner, while also becoming nefariously evil. Earth 616 Hulk ends up traveling forward in time to stop Maestro, which proves to be a much more difficult task than he initially imagined. Hulk's experience with Maestro gave Hulk nightmares of what he could become for years and years and years to come into the future. Number 10, Legends of the Dead Earth. In Legends of the Dead Earth, the surviving human population of Earth are all basically aboard a spaceship, which drifts kind of aimlessly through space as it's lost its heading. The humans have also been on the spaceship so long, they basically forgot there's even a world outside. However, Batman rises up among them to become a hero and help them once again find their way. This Batman is not 
THE Batman Bruce Wayne, but instead a well meaning citizen on the spaceship who learns the truth about how they are basically lost. He takes up the mantle of the hero from old folklore known as Batman and inspires a girl aboard the ship named Triss Plover to help him in his fight to fix the ship's navigation system. It's actually a really depressing story though because in the end she's like, man I'm not going to be alive to get to this planet. What's the point of anything? Number 9. Saint Batman Saint Batman was the name Asriel took up in one of the dark multiverse alternate realities. Here Asriel had taken up the cape and cowl in Batman's stead after his back was broken by Bane, but refused to give back the mantle and instead of Batman defeating Jean Paul and taking the mantle back, Asriel basically won that fight keeping it. He turned Bruce into a shadow of his former self, removing all his limbs and keeping him alive through kind of a cybernetic life support thing, which also seemed to cause Bruce extreme pain. Years later Bruce is saved by the son of Talia al Ghul and Bane. However, it turns out in rescuing Batman and later defeating Asriel, they really just swapped out one awful tyrant for an even worse one. And friends, before we head on to the next point, if you are loving this list, we would love if you headed over to our Facebook page and gave it a, a like and a follow. It really does help us out over here at YouTube, so thank you! Number 6. Jace Fox Jace becomes Batman in the possible future we get a glimpse into through DC's Future State event. In this event, Jace Fox, also known as Tim Fox, one of the children of Batman's allies, Lucius Fox ends up becoming Batman in a cyberpunk dystopian future where Gotham has become a police state. Jace is a mysterious figure but stumbles upon Batman's tech and decides to try and use it to do some good, despite the fact that at this point all masks are outlawed in Gotham. Jace Fox keeps his vigilante deeds and persona a secret from the rest of the Fox family. Many of his combat skills come from his life as a mercenary and from Katana, who he was once a protege of. Number 7. Lizard Hulk In the alternate future of the Spider Island, Island story, the whole of New York City has been taken over by a villain known as the Spider Queen. The Spider Queen has infected almost all inhabitants of the city, including all of the heroes, with a virus that turns them into mindless spider zombie like slaves under her control. Luckily, there is a group of heroes who make a resistance to this villainous Spider Queen. Most notable among them would be Eugene Flash Thompson or Agent Venom. Agent Venom eventually realizes that if he subjects some some of these spider hybrid heroes to a different DNA tampering process, like for example the lizard serum or even the green goblin serum, that it will override the spider transformation effectively curing the patients. When a group of spider heroes, including the spider hulk, attack agent venom, he injects the spider hulk with the lizard serum, effectively turning him into a more giant and muscular lizard hulk. He got a tail, he got sharp teeth, he got scales, he a lizard hulk baby! Number six. Intelligent Design God Hulk from What If Planet Hulk. Most comic book readers and especially fans of Marvel and the Hulk know of the storyline where the Illuminati banished the Hulk from Earth to send him to another planet. He ended up crash landing on Sakaar and becoming a gladiator turned liberator turned ruler of the planet until his ship self destructed, killing his family and bringing him back to Earth with a vengeance that no guilty person was safe from. What if Planet Hulk ends up asking the question? What if the Illuminati's banishment had hit its original target? In this story, Hulk lands on an incredibly peaceful and serene planet. And sure, he goes a bit ragey at first, but he eventually realizes the planet is inhabited by a race of peaceful creatures. Over long periods of time, the Hulk helps this race to evolve and become a thriving civilization. They end up viewing the Hulk as their god, and he basically acts as one that leads them to wealth and prosperity. It's one of the few Hulk stories that doesn't end in tears, and I'm more than happy to talk about it for that reason alone. Number 5. Happy Banner And from happiness back to tears again. Ready to talk about Old Man Logan? Yet again? Good. Basically, in this dystopian future where the villains all banded together to take out all of the heroes, Wolverine has become a farmer. A simple man trying to just make ends meet and keep his family alive. But the main antagonist in this tale is the Hulk gang, made up of the incestuous children and grandchildren of Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, and what he claims was his cousin Jennifer Walters, as in She-Hulk. This gang of horrible Hulks was led by none other than the one true Pappy Banner himself. Pappy Banner doesn't need to change his form to access the powers of the Hulk. In the fight between Old Man Logan and Pappy Banner, this regular 
other human Bruce Banner was tossing cows and throwing punches that sent Logan flying. But when he did transform, he grew to a massive, overweight, maniacally twisted version of the Hulk that ate old man Logan whole. Well, uh, until Logan healed up and burst out of the Hulk's stomach. So that's nice. Number four, Hulk the End. The End series chronicles the last days of various characters in the Marvel Universe. For a lot of doomsday type stories, it often ends in the Earth being destroyed in a nuclear war. But what remains after that? Well, basically, the Hulk remains. As the only human left on planet Earth, Bruce Banner wanders the wastes in an eternal struggle with himself. As in, an eternal struggle with the Hulk. Basically, Bruce has seen the deaths of all those he loved. All those he cared about. There's nothing left in this world for him and he would prefer to just pass on. But no matter what he does, the Hulk does not let him. Speaking of the big green Goliath, he thinks Banner's will to pass away is a puny human thought and he wants to be the strongest there is and to just be left alone. The two of them have a huge internal falling out. Eventually Bruce has a heart attack and while Hulk himself goes on to survive somehow, he now realizes just how alone he really is. Damn. Number 3, Thomas Wayne. Although it might seem weird to put Thomas Wayne on this list as he's Batman's father and so in a way is like part of his past, in the alternate future known as Flashpoint, Thomas actually becomes Batman instead of Bruce. This is after Bruce is killed, causing Thomas to make a plan to get vengeance and inspiring him to become a vigilante fighting for justice on the streets of Gotham. Martha, however, kind of goes the opposite way with it. The death of Bruce causes her to basically go insane. Unable to move on or let go, she ends up haunted by his memory and becomes the villain known as the Joker, becoming Thomas's sworn nemesis, despite the love that they once shared. What a tragic story. Number 2, Dick Grayson. Helena isn't the only one to carry on Batman and Catwoman's legacy on Earth 2. Let's not forget that before Helena was born, Batman had an adoptive son in the boy wonder known as Robin, aka Dick Grayson, often known as the original Robin across many different worlds. On Earth 2, Dick Grayson would end up taking his adoptive father's mantle before Helena did and operate as Batman for a time. He settles down with Barbara Gordon and the two even have a son together who they named John. Dick, however, loses the use of his legs when he becomes paralyzed by the Joker shooting him through the stomach, which damages his spine. Sound familiar? Dick would later become Oracle. In this reality, Barbara ends up as a cop who gets shot and dies while attempting to help her family flee Darkseid's invasion. Their son John grows up to become his Aunt Helena's sidekick, Robin. Super cute. I like it. Not Babs' death though. I don't like that. That's that's not nice. Number one, Terry McGinnis. When it comes to Batman, there are actually a lot of people who would be suited to don the cape and cowl. Sometimes in his stead, and other times as those who would take up the mantle after he dies or he retires. In the case of Terry McGinnis, he was pretty much created to become the new Batman. Using Bruce's own DNA, Amanda Waller designed Terry as part of her project Batman Beyond. She basically overwrote the reproductive DNA of Terry's father and chose the McGinnis Guinness family to create the modern genetic Bruce Wayne duplicate because their psychological profiles were close matches to Bruce's own parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne. Which means that, you know, when Terry grows up, he should be like pretty much a perfect replica. Even more so if his parents had been assassinated like Amanda wanted, but uh, didn't work out for Waller there. <laughs> Probably for the best though. I don't think you should assassinate people's parents just to turn them into Batman. That seems pretty messed up, even for Amanda Waller. At number 10 is Kliz's Klitz, Klitz, Klitz Plick. Just put the name up on the screen, please, because I, I can't pronounce that. This guy, believe it or not, is actually a descendant of Cal L. This weird little dude hails from far in the future, around the 67th century to be more specific, but he is immortal, so he's also encountered as far into the future as the 853rd century. He is also known to be a fifth dimensional being, which means that he can explore dimensions beyond the understanding of any normal humans, including myself. I don't get it. And I'm not alone. Most heroes wouldn't even understand it either. He has all the classic Kryptonian powers, but due to his bloodline including genes from a whole other race of superpowered beings, this future version of Superman also has 5D vision, which means that he can share his thoughts with others in real time, among other things. And he uses a weapon called the Hyperpoon, which is a hilarious name for a weapon that functions beyond the means of our comprehension. It's basically just more 5D stuff. 
At number 9 is Super Batman. Not much is known about this guy other than that he was at one point part of the Superman squad. He is known as a mixture of two different heroic traditions, having descended from both the Superman and Batman families. Of course, he wears a uniform that marries the designs of both Batman and Superman costumes, and seems to have a combination of the two heroes strengths as well. Sometime in the future this guy is formed and even though there's little known about him, I put him on the list because a hybrid of Superman and Batman must be pretty powerful to some crazy degree we would never understand. At number 8 is Superman Secundus. In the DC 1 million timeline, Superman Secundus is explained to be Superman Prime's direct heir, having founded the Superman dynasty and successfully fighting off the Tyrant's son as well as Solaris among others. Then in All-Star Superman, another future Superman named Superman 2 appears, who seems to just be the same version of the hero as Superman Secundus, just in a different iteration. This future stuff gets a little bit complicated, but this future Superman seems pretty powerful and since he's known to be the son of Superman Prime, I felt I just needed to throw him on the list. Number 7, Justice League of Assassins. In the alternate future reality of Earth 14, the JLA is a little bit different. Instead of being the Justice League of America, they are known as the Justice League of Assassins, which still perfectly fits that same acronym. So yay, JLA. Like in the main reality, Batman also ends up joining this team. The world they live in seems to be a post apocalyptic Apocalyptic war zone when we see the JLA in issue number 15 of the 2016 Superman series. Despite their most valiant efforts, the Justice League of Assassins, including Batman, end up defeated and killed by the prophecy. Batman actually ends up losing his head as a result of this fight. He's like the first one to go. Gets his head shot clean off. At least he still gets to finish what he was saying though. As his head pops off. Number six, Helena Wayne. In the alternate future reality of Earth 2, it is Helena Wayne, Batman and Catwoman's daughter, who lives on to carry on the Batman legacy. Helena Wayne is often known by the name Huntress. Not to be confused with Helena Bertinelli, the Huntress of the main continuity, but eventually goes on to take up her father's mantle of Batman. Yeah, not Batwoman, just Batman. Kinda love it. We haven't gotten to see too much of Helena's Batman in action, but I have always loved the idea of Catwoman and Batman settling down together and having a daughter who would one day be inspired to carry on their legacy and become a hero using either of their superhero names in their honor. Number 4, Damian Wayne. One of the darkest Batmen to arise would be Damian Wayne's Batman. Damian takes up the cape and cowl in a possible future story featured in Batman issue 666. Get it? 666. Known as Batman in Bethlehem. Batman in Bethlehem is a story where in the future, Damian Wayne sells his soul to Satan in order to ensure Gotham's protection. This drastic measure happens in a world where people really are looking for some kind of security as climate change, war, and acts of terror threaten the entire planet, turning it into a hellish futuristic landscape. This future version of Damian, who becomes Batman, also seems to be impervious to gunfire and no longer restrains himself from killing those who oppose him. Kind of like... My dad was here so that I could like be this Batman later. I feel like Daddy Batman would not be too happy with you, Damien. He would be like, don't kill people, but you're gonna do what you're gonna do, I guess. It's a different world. At number three is the Superman from the Dark Knight Returns storyline. One of the most iconic storylines involving both Superman and Batman takes place in a future where the government, aka Lex Luthor and Brainiac, has control over him and they force Superman to carry out missions for them as a kind of superpowered contractor. A brainwashed superpowered contractor, that is. Seeing this from afar, Bruce Wayne decides he has to venture into the dangerous territory of mortal versus alien combat, taking on Superman 1v1. Luckily, Clark Kent comes back from his brainwashing, but only after a huge battle between the two former friends. At number two is the Superman from the Kingdom Come storyline. This iconic future version of Superman has to come out of retirement to protect the human race against a new, misguided group of younger super beings. A more grizzled, aged, and wise Superman, the Kingdom Come storyline brings a ton of humanity to the character as he faces the challenge of humbling himself and his allies in their older age. After a murderous superhero named Magog is acquitted of killing the Joker, Superman goes into hiding for 10 years, leaving Kansas to be overrun by a community of misguided superpowered beings. Having also lost Lois Lane, Superman becomes jaded, but ultimately comes out of hiding to reform the Justice League. On top of reforming a younger generation of misguided heroes though, and 
well, a brainwashed Captain Marvel, which adds a huge rut in the whole works, they have to also prevent the humans from dropping three massive nuclear bombs on Kansas, which are also super powered to affect super powered beings more than they originally would. This version of Superman shows a side to the hero that we are not used to giving him a wiser, more jaded disposition. It really proves that doing the right thing is just in Kal-El's blood, no matter how much the world has betrayed him. At number one is Superman Prime. This has got to be the most powerful and iconic futuristic version of Superman from the comics. And don't get this mixed up with Superboy Prime either, that's a whole other guy. Superman Prime appears in the DC 1 million series and sets out at the end of the 21st century to explore the cosmos. He then returns briefly in the 700th century, that's roughly 70,000 years later, and spends his time in his new fortress of solitude which is the sun. Finally, another 10 and a half thousand years later in the 853rd century, he comes back again, this time with a totally golden makeover and creates a new Lois Lane from scratch along with some other key players from his old life. This version of Superman is just completely overpowered and more of a god than many other iterations of the hero, giving us a glimpse into the vast expanse and possibility of a distant future for Superman. Number 10, Peter B. Parker. This alternate future version of Peter Parker hails from the Into the Spider-Verse multiverse. He is the older, mid 30s to approaching perhaps middle-aged Spider-Man, also known as Peter B. Parker. With the B in his name presumably standing for Benjamin, like the main continuity Peter of 616. In this reality, Peter is all grown up. He settles down with MJ only to later get divorced as Mary Jane wanted kids but Peter wasn't ready. It's clear that this Peter Parker regrets some of his life choices, namely hurting MJ and wants her back. He is pulled into Miles' reality thanks to Kingpin's super colliders experiments. Peter attempts to train Miles while also teaming up with him to defeat Kingpin and return both himself and the other alternate spider folks back to their home realities before it's too late. Number 9. Officer Parker In the alternate future of Earth X, Peter and Mary Jane's daughter May does not die and instead lives, growing up to become that reality's venom. MJ dies of cancer before things start to get wild on Earth X, leaving Peter to take care of his daughter alone. Their relationship becomes strained as Peter doesn't believe that May can actually control the symbiote, when in reality, she can. In this future, Peter's identity is also revealed to the public by Norman Osborn when he takes over the Daily Bugle, which also runs the paper out of business due to the revelation that the hero they called a supposed menace had been on their payroll the whole time. Eventually, Peter is convinced to join the New York police force by Luke Cage, and he works hard to protect the people of New York and later their scarce food supply. When the polls are reversed and New York freezes over as a result. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists about future alternate versions of Spidey, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Final Stand Spider-Man Not all future Spider-Men finish life happy, and not all of them even are still considered heroes in the end. With Final Stand Spider-Man, the world is a lot more bleak in this future. This is an alternate future version of Peter Parker from a possible future that Madam Web gets a glimpse into. Here Peter Parker ends up killing Kraven the Hunter and goes on to kill Dr. Octopus. He ends up betraying those he loves and in the end when the NYPD hunt him down, giving him an opportunity to surrender and admit to his crimes, Spider-Man refuses. He is shot and killed in this final stand. At number 7 we've got Connor Kent. or FKA Superboy. This future version of Superman is pretty unique in that he's actually a clone of both Superman and Lex Luthor. He spends his youth in fear that he'll turn out more like Lex Luthor in all the worst ways, and unfortunately that's actually what happens. As Connor grows up into a more mature hero, he gains a reputation as a brutal version of Superman who uses extreme force against his enemies with little to no remorse. But later on during the Infinite Crisis storyline, we learn that this future Connor Kent is actually a clone of an early version of himself, which is a relief to him, and but doesn't make much sense. Does it make sense? I don't know. Anyway, he's not Lex Luthor, at least. At number six, we have Adam Ken plus 477 SPMN. The future is horrible at coming up with names apparently, but anyway, this future version of Superman is pretty cool because he kind of comes across as so futuristic that he's actually a much more complex being, but also a sort of 
simpler and stripped down being than Superman is now in a weird way, which is how it seems like the future would actually be if you went forward far enough. In Superman number 400, we see a future where Superman has died and his descendants have reproduced with humans, creating a new type of super being. But when they accidentally create a massive vortex in space, one of their leaders, Adam Ken, elects himself to plug it while the rest of them turn themselves into energy for some reason to protect themselves. Anyway, the plan works and the vortex is mended, leaving only Adam Ken, we'll just call him Adam, leaving Adam as the only living being in the universe. So he thinks until he meets his Eve. At number five, we have the DCAU Superman from Batman Beyond. Only aging slightly, leaving some gray in his hair, this version of Kal-El is actually turned evil by Starro the Conqueror, who influences his actions over time to fit his evil agenda. But before this is found out, Superman leads the Justice League Unlimited for a while into the future, even inviting Terry McGinnis, aka Batman Beyond, into the League. It's good he does this too, because Batman becomes the one who frees Superman from Starro's grasp down the line. This version of Superman is a more experienced and stronger hero, and although he's tricked by a villain into doing some evil deeds, this isn't a list ranking power or wit. This version of Superman is just one of the more well-known and respected, and I figured he at least had to go in the top five. At number four is Jordan Elliott. This is one of my personal favorites of these future versions of Superman because it's a rare example of a future Kal-El hanging up the mantle of Superman and actually living the existence of a mortal man, which I think is a pretty cool glimpse into the character and how he would act if his life were simple and much less influential. His motivation to do this is that he actually ends up killing Mr. Muxia's put luck, which Thank goodness, so I don't have to say the guy's name anymore. Who he kills after the annoying little dude lays out a number of bad things to happen in Superman's life. In a fit of shame, Superman voluntarily walks into a room containing gold kryptonite which strips him of his powers permanently. He then takes on the name of Jordan Elliott after his father Jor-El and marries Lois Lane in anonymity. And honestly, I'm happy for the dude because we don't have to deal with that little mixy plick plick guy anymore, right? And also, Superman's done enough. Number three, MC2. In the MC2 reality of Earth 982, Peter Parker actually gets to grow up and settle down with MJ. The two do end up married with kids, with daughter May, Mayday Parker, successfully being born. May grows up to have spider powers like her dad and eventually becomes known as the hero Spider Girl, living up to her family legacy and becoming a hero in her own right herself. Peter and MJ in this reality also have another child, May's younger brother, Benji. Benji, as a youngster, also displays abilities and powers. He also goes on to have an adventure as a little tyke with Carnage, unintentionally bonding with the symbiote. Fortunately, his older sister May is able to save him, although for a time, Ben would actually suffer from permanent hearing loss as a result of that rescue. Number two, Jerry Drew. In the same future that MC2 Peter hails from, known as the alternate reality of Earth 982, Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman, also has a child. MC2 is notoriously known for being the reality where superheroes get to grow up, retire, or settle down to live a somewhat normal life, possibly amidst continued heroics for those, of course, who don't retire. As such, Jessica is also one of those heroes. She gets married and ends up pregnant, but unfortunately, her son Jerry is born with a rare bloodborne illness. In an attempt to cure Jerry, Jessica submits him to the same experimentation which saved her as a child and also gave her spider powers. The same happens to Jerry, who also gets spider powers and ends up becoming a hero. Taking up the mantle, Spider-Man. After being inspired by stories that his mom tells him of her days as a hero and of Spider-Man's adventures. Number one, Spider-Man 2099. What would a future Spider-Man list be without the future Spider-Man? That's right, we're talking about Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. Or just Spider-Man, really, as he's known in his own world, because it is 2099, so people don't just go like, hey, that's that hero 2099, and that's that villain 2099. 2099 is often thought of as being the future for the main comic book continuity of Earth 616. Here, Miguel wasn't always actually the most altruistic guy, which I think is part of what makes him so cool as a character. He's got flaws. And becoming Spider-Man is part of his journey to becoming a better person. He becomes better as an individual as he becomes a hero. Miguel also comes with a futuristic look and some future tech as well. He got powers after submitting himself to his own experiments in the hopes of ridding himself of an addiction that was forced on him by the company he worked for. 
Alchemax in order to prevent him from quitting. That's a pretty intense way to try to get someone to not quit. Be like, well, we create this uh, substance and we're gonna give it to you without you knowing and now you have uh, an addiction to it and now you have to keep working for us if you want that thing. So. Uh, there you go. But thank goodness Miguel found a way around that. At number 10, we have Weapon X Wolverine. First appearing in X Men Alpha number one, this version of Wolverine is missing one hand and fights in a Magneto led version of the X Men. It's hard to imagine Logan being even more grizzled than we're used to, but with face paint and a ton of built up resentment about the whole missing hand situation, this version of the hero shows what age can do to a person, especially when you're creeping towards the ripe age of 300. Known as Weapon X in this future reality, this Wolverine soon becomes known as Weapon Omega. And to be fair, his anger isn't the only thing driving him to be more vicious than ever. This version of Wolverine is augmented by the Celestials and can only eventually be stopped by Jean Grey. At number 9, we have Counter Earth Hawkeye. This could be contested whether or not he's from the future or just an alternate reality, but Time is kind of hard to follow sometimes when dealing with interdimensional travel, so I'll leave this one up for debate. Regardless, it's a pretty unique version of Wolverine that I thought was worth mentioning. Franklin Richards writes a new version of Hawkeye in Onslaught Reborn number one, who appears to be a different iteration than the one we're used to. And that's because behind the mask is actually Wolverine and not Clint Barton. On Counter Earth, this version of Wolverine is part of the Avengers and it seems to me that this alternate dimension is further along in its own timeline allowing for Wolverine to possess some kind of magical ability brought on by Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. At number 8 is Phalanx Wolverine from the newer comic series X Deaths of Wolverine released between January and March of 2022. This version of Wolverine travels into the future to save a being who is very very important to the mutant race. And as he travels through time he starts to envision memories from his past. Memories that he hadn't ever before been able to recall. One of the more significant of these lost memories is one where he was present during the birth of Charles Xavier, saving his family from Omega Red. This storyline uses a future version of Wolverine to remind us that this hero, being the most published in the history of Marvel Comics, has so much history that there is still new lore to be uncovered even in 2022. Number 7, Avengers Forever. This is actually a version of future Spider-Man often referred to as Spider-Man 2099. Not THE Spider-Man 2099 though, as I said this is an alternate version of that alternate version of Spider-Man. This Spider-Man 2099 is still Miguel O'Hara, but instead of hailing from the 2099 reality of Earth 928, this version of Miguel hails from the reality of Earth 98120. As seen in the 90s comic series Avengers Forever. In this alternate future, Miguel ends up joining the Avengers, but unfortunately later meets his end at the totemic, life force draining hands of Moreland the Inheritor during the Spider Verse event. Number 6, The CEO. As we said before, not all future versions of Spider Man are heroes. Case in point, the Peter Parker who is still alive in 2099, as seen in the story from the 2011 video game, Spider Man Edge of Time. Here, Peter Parker lives on to the year 2099 thanks to anti-aging tech. He fakes his own death as Spider-Man and operates in the shadows, becoming the CEO of the company Alchemax. He is one of the villains of the game who Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, must face in the end. Although Peter ends up a secret antagonist and villain, his goal at least is somewhat altruistic here. Peter wants to rewrite the timeline so that he can bring back all those that he's lost during his time as a hero. In the end, this Peter presumably gets erased from the time stream after a younger version of Peter Parker is convinced to not go down this path and never become the CEO of Alchemex. Number 5, Spider-Man 2211. Spider-Man 2211 is like Spider-Man 2099, but from even farther into the future. He is known as a time spinner and does his best to protect the time field. This version of Spider-Man is named Max Bourne and his appearance also differs from the Spider-Man of Earth 616 and the Spider-Man of 2099 in the regard that his costume has multiple mechanized arms. Kind of like Dr. Octopus or more specifically Dr. Octopus's look when he became Spider-Man and was known as Superior Spider-Man. Max Boren's arch nemesis is Hobgoblin of 2211, who it turns out is actually his own daughter, Robin. 
gasp. Along with Spider-Man of Earth 616 and Spider-Man of 2099, he faces and defeats Hobgoblin only for her true identity to be revealed to him. Number 4, Rain. Specifically, Spider-Man Rain. This future version of Spider-Man hails from an even bleaker reality than Final Stand Spider-Man, hailing from the comic known as Spider-Man Rain. Here, Peter ends up working at a flower shop after years of being a hero. No longer operating as Spider-Man, this version of Peter has become somewhat senile, frail, and old. He is also haunted by his past, having hallucinations of Mary Jane, who is now long dead. Mary Jane in this reality apparently died from being close to Peter, which he carries immense guilt over. Apparently his radioactiveness was not so good for MJ's body, ended up giving her cancer and sadly killed her in the end. Peter eventually does return to heroics, but even then it's a pretty sad return, with him mostly getting his butt whooped when he isn't busy being swept up in some kind of fantasy or hallucination of his past. At number 3 is Old Man Phoenix. First appearing in Marvel Legacy number 1, this version of Wolverine is, as you could imagine by the name, Old Man Logan possessing the Phoenix Force. Hailing from Earth 14412, this version of Logan basically mirrors that of 616 Logan up until King Loki wipes out humankind. Logan is known to be dead under unknown circumstances, but is soon chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force and travels the universe destroying celestial bodies on his way. When he eventually encounters a future version of Loki, he goes back in time to undo the damage that Loki had done, letting go of the Phoenix Force in the process. And this is a request by Loki himself, after seeing something that changes his intentions for supreme power on a dime. This version of Wolverine is definitely the most powerful on the list, both in influence and sheer power. And he looks pretty badass as well, like an old angry wizard. Fire wizard. At number 2 we have Old Man Logan. Just good old Old Man Logan. Everyone knows this one. I wanted to put him higher on the list than his Phoenix Force counterpart because even though the previous entry is more powerful, Old Man Logan is just more iconic. Old Man Logan first appears in Fantastic Four number 558 but is most well known for his own self-titled series. In this future, Logan has a family but is in constant fear for his life as most of the world is ruled by supervillains. Most superheroes are dead this far into the future and with his family on the line, he becomes a driven father and husband, packing a punch even more powerful now that it's driven by love and the fear that comes with it. After he raises enough money to protect his family from the Hulk gang, which is a thing in the future I guess, the gang kills his family anyway, leaving old man Logan with only one choice to kill the original Hulk then and there. He is then integrated into the mainstream Marvel Universe after the events of Secret Wars. At number 1 we have the Days of Future Past Wolverine or Wolverine from Earth 811. On Earth 811 this version of Wolverine lives in a time 33 years ahead of the modern 616 version. And when the Watcher from Earth 9997 looks into Logan's past, he unveils that Logan's past isn't quite as it seemed. Instead of being born sometime in the 1800s and tested on in a lab, X-51 finds that he had actually descended from a tribe of humans known as the Moon People. In this future storyline, he's faced with the task of protecting the mutant race after the Mutant Control Act is put into effect and Sentinels are ordered as the protectors of America. After a few search and rescue missions, Wolverine joins the resistance and fights with his mutant comrades, including Magneto, to defeat the Sentinels. In this reality, Wolverine has all the same powers as the 616 version, but he does have access to the Watcher's transportation devices as well on Earth's moon, which could transport him anywhere on Earth instantly. Number 10, What If Sorcerer Supreme. In the What If series, we got an issue that explored the idea of what would happen if Tony Stark became Sorcerer Supreme in place of Stephen Strange and was forced to do battle with the dread lord of the dark dimension, Dormammu. Oddly enough, this isn't the only alternate future where Tony ends up as Sorcerer Supreme. Maybe we'll talk about that later. It's actually just one of them. Here, both Stark and Strange are in a car accident together, which robs Stephen of his ability to use his hands as a surgeon. Tony swears to fix Stephen 
Raven's hands and the two set out on a quest, which sets Stark down a path to meeting and training with the Ancient One, instead of Steven doing that. After becoming the Ancient One's disciple and defeating the evil Baron Mordo, Stark becomes the new Sorcerer Supreme and is forced to do battle with Dormammu, who plans on, of course, invading Earth. Stark makes for himself a suit of armor to help him defeat Dormammu, which combines both Tony's knowledge of technology and the mystic arts. Number 9. Iron Man 2020 Iron Man 2020 is both an event and a character. The editorial name was given to a different Iron Man, Arno Stark. Arno Stark, aka Iron Man 2020, was Tony's secret brother and the natural born heir of the Stark family. Whereas it was later revealed that Tony was actually adopted to kind of help cover up what had really happened with Arno and to basically protect the firstborn Stark. Arno would end up taking up the mantle of Iron Man in the future year of 2020. Although now that would actually be the past because it's 2022 at the time of this recording and at the time of the event it was the present because it was 2020, the original Iron Man 2020 comic was actually published in the 90s. So at the time 2020 was very much in the future. So for those of you trying to tell me 2020 is the past, I know but at the time it's the future. In the event Iron Man 2020, Arno takes up his brother's mantle as he fights against the uprising of machines. Tony at the time felt he was more machine than man, and Arno basically uses this revelation of Tony's to discredit him, taking his place and becoming Iron Man in his stead. In the end, Arno would basically be driven mad while trying to save humans from machines by attempting to take control of all life, both organic and AI, in order to protect them. Don't worry though, because Tony would defeat Arno and kind of put him in a, a dream state to make him hopefully be uh, happy. Until he wakes up and realizes all of the things he thinks he's been living have been a lie, which will probably not be good. I don't think that's happened yet though. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you are enjoying our content here, why not head on over to Facebook and follow us there. We have lots of bonus content coming your way, giveaways and other good stuff. So go on over there and click that follow button. Number eight, Darkhold Iron Man. The Darkhold Iron Man tale gives us a glimpse into a dark alternate future for our hero. In this reality, when Tony Stark first makes the Iron Man suit, something in his programming basically goes wrong. This causes the suit to remove Tony's skin when it is put on and then removed. Tony learns this the hard way. While working on the suit to try and fix this issue, he feels a compulsion to put it on as though the suit is calling to him. And seemingly, without thinking, he finds himself doing so, eventually even putting on the helmet. The Iron Man suit works to remove Tony's skin and then eventually breaks down his skull and his bones, merging with him fully so that the suit can never actually be removed without killing Tony because now they're kind of one being. But why would he ever want to remove this suit? Driven insane, in the end, Tony Stark believes that the Iron Man suit is actually the way of the future and offers one to every human, turning the population into a bunch of techno organic iron suit human hybrid monster things permanently, including his friends and his loved ones who he also forces into suits. Ugh which would be really terrible because they know what's going to happen. At least those people are unsuspecting and they're just like, ah, oh, free iron suit. That sounds lovely. Let me run into this and see what happens. Better or worse, if you see it coming or if you're surprised by it. I don't know. I feel like if you see it coming, it's worse in my mind. At number seven, we have Logan from Earth 1051. One, 1,000. 10,511. Another iteration of Weapon X, this version of Wolverine appears in Wolverine Weapon X issue number 12 for just a brief moment. But in the short time that he appears, we get a glimpse into a whole new world where Wolverine has lost both his hands, replacing one of them with a hook. During a major battle in a distant future, he comes in to support his team with a big black beard and overgrown hair and a costume that is seems entirely upgraded. He's got metal shoulder and chest pads with a utility belt and he seems like, well, seems like he's been through a lot. He fights against Roxxon to take back the government but is eventually, spoiler alert, killed by Deathlock. At number 6 we have James Howlett from Earth 96099. Only appearing very briefly, this future version of the hero is totally missing his arm after his battles with the Hulks, which seems like a theme, this whole no arm thing. But anyway, this time he's also totally bald as well. He decides to recruit a new X-Men team with a new race of mutants that he encounters in his future timeline. His goal is to rebuild Baltimore of all places after it is destroyed along with much of civilization after a major war, but he also has to protect the world from an army of mindless hulks 
who continue to act as the main threat in this storyline. At number 5 we have the Wolverine from Wolverine The End. This comic series is known to offer the reader a look into how these characters face, well their ends. And in Wolverine's issues, we face what seems to be an even older and more grim version of an old man Logan. But for Wolverine, we're left with a cliffhanger instead of his death, suggesting that there will be even more future iterations of Logan and or James Howlett to come. In the final issue of this The End series, James faces off against his own older brother, John Howlett Jr. And as they duke it out in front of an audience of military personnel, James ends up accidentally killing his brother, driving his claws through his chest after a fall. After some epic final words are exchanged, we watch James sit in silence as it's suggested that he is apprehended by the authorities. But this isn't confirmed, that's actually where the series ends. This is definitely one of the more gothic and darker versions of Wolverine, and the dark epic storyline that this series explores really reflects how much Wolverine has been through over the years, even into the future. At number 4 we have Ultimate Cable. We all know that Cable is a time traveler and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, on Earth 2107 this isn't the case. Instead, James Howlett takes on the mantle of Cable and sports a big scar across his face. This is from a battle taking place in the future where this Wolverine version of Cable or vice versa, fights Apocalypse with the X-Men and his arm is once again ripped off. When Apocalypse absorbs his healing factor, he uses the severed arm with the claws on it against Cable Wolverine and leaves a massive scar on the face. And since this and the dismemberment come after his healing power is taken away, these wounds remain. Luckily, this version of Wolverine has other abilities like Cable's and eventually finds a way to travel back in time 30 years to collect Professor or X and try and right the wrongs of the future. Number 3 Mainframe This is that legacy character for Tony Stark of the other main future reality for a 616 known as MC2 Earth 982. Here in this reality, Tony Stark creates his own protege to carry on the Iron Man legacy, using his brain patterns or brain waves blended with an android modeled after his own armor. This android would be known as Mainframe. Mainframe was one of the original members of the MC2 Future Avengers team, editorially known as a next, after the name of the comic series that the team appeared in. Mainframe initially was much more by the book as a hero, pretty rigid in their ways. Over time however, the android would learn to loosen up somewhat and even be considered a close friend to many of his heroic colleagues on the superhero team. Number 2 Andros Stark Andros Stark is another Iron Man who hails from the 2099 reality. Not the main 2099 reality though. <laughs> Ugh, so many alternate timelines. This version of the alternate future Iron Man is actually Tony's grandson, Andros. Andros travels back in time in an attempt to stop his grandfather from creating Vortex. Vortex was initially created by Tony to protect humanity, but ended up turning on humankind instead, infecting the internet and threatening the existence of all human life on Earth in the future. However, in a strange twist, Andros actually ends up learning during his journey back to the past that it was his jaunt back in time that would actually result in the creation of the Vortex virus. The future crisis ends up being averted thanks to this revelation, but unfortunately it also causes Andros to uh, cease to exist. At least this specific version of Andros who travelled back in time. There could very well still be an Andros out there somewhere in the world, one who you know didn't have a reason to travel back thanks to the future being saved. This future version of Iron Man 2099 does not appear in the comics, but instead is from the animated series Iron Man Armored Adventures. Number 1 Dr. Anthony Stark Come in full circle now, from 10 to 1. As I said, what if Sorcerer Supreme Tony Stark is not the only one out there? There's also the 2099 AD alternate future Tony Stark, who also ends up as Sorcerer Supreme, known as such, or sometimes as Doctor Stranger or Doctor Anthony Stark. Although once again, although this is 2099 AD, this is not the main 2099 reality, this is another splintered continuity. This future version of Tony shows up in infamous Iron Man when Doctor Doom as the aforementioned infamous Iron Man appears into the future. However, this future version of Tony would also appear initially in the 2014 all new X-Men annual where Tempest would run into him when she attempted to return to the reality where her husband and daughter existed. However, Stark would inform her that this reality no longer existed and he would actually urge Tempest to return to her original timeline, the continuity of Earth 616. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have Abra Kadabra, aka Citizen Abra. He began his magical days as a Flash villain. First 
first appearing in comics in the Flash issue 128. He's from the future, of course, like most of these guys are, but it's a future where, sadly, magic shows aren't a thing anymore. Yeah, sorry, David Blaine. Gotta get a new job. He's from the 64th century, and technology has become so advanced that pulling a rabbit out of a hat just simply won't cut it anymore. I heard about the time machine powered by M-Metal, he just had to get his glittery magician hands on it. It was only capable of one trip, so Abra snuck into the laboratory and shot back in time to the 20th century where magicians were still celebrities, like Chris Angel or David Blaine or David Copperfield or, you know, the other ones. He would use technology from his timeline well beyond what we're capable of and then blow our minds in these magic shows. The shows were going well at first until people got bored, then they were actually more interested in this new statue being built in town, so we figured the next logical way of getting attention was to start stealing things, starting with this fancy new statue. He kept stealing, and he kept stealing after that, and he kept using his future tech to evade capture, so when it comes to magicians, Abracadabra is very committed to the craft, in the future or the past. Number nine, Gore, the God Butcher. The God Butcher will be played by Christian Bale in the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder sequel, and yes, he is a time-traveling menace as well. He made his first appearance in Thor God of Thunder issue two. He was born on a planet with no name, which is always a great sign. Gore lost his parents when he was very young, and he was told to pray to these gods, because they would always make things better, these glorious gods. And then after getting a wife and son, death kept looming over, and he lost both of them as well. Really tragic stuff. So now he's a little bit more than upset at these gods. He wants them to answer or to pay, one of the two. With the all-black necrosword powers, he heads out for revenge on these gods, but in the past. He would use the Pool of Forever to travel back in time and make these attacks happen. He would use the Pool of Forever to go back in time and then attack all these gods when they were babies, right? So it took different versions of Thor from different timelines just to put a stop to Gore the God Butcher. So with this new Thor movie coming out, including Natalie Portman, Mjolnir, Lady Sif, I feel like it's gonna be a cosmic headache and do some time stuff in there as well. But in Taika, we trust. It's kind of like when Rhodey suggested getting rid of Thanos when he was younger by, you know, Gore the God Butcher is basically that mentality, but 10 times worse. A with powers. Number seven, Earth Three. Earth Three is the reality that belongs to the Reverse Justice League. Not the Bizarro version, but the Crime Syndicate. They are basically an evil version of the Justice League we know and love from the main continuity. But instead of being a one for one of every character on the team, each member actually has their own more evil counterpart. Not necessarily being an alternate version of them, but in some cases they are. Wonder Woman is replaced by Lois Lane as a manipulative and evil superwoman. Batman is replaced by his older alternate sibling, Thomas Jr., who killed both his parents and the younger Bruce as Owlman. And Cal Ul, Cal Ul, I think we still say it Cal El, is the last vengeful son of Krypton known as Ultraman. But his Cal El is spelt with just two L's instead of E L. And that's only some of the impressively villainous roster who basically all rule Earth, using fear to motivate the people to do as they say. At least in the original crime syndicate. It's different people now. Not all of them are still there. Times change and when you're evil, people are going to usurp you and you'll probably end up dying at some point. That's just how it goes. Number six, Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past is a mutant based horror future where all mutants basically end up persecuted and held in camps where they're marked with M tattoos and forced to live out their days. This was a future reality that was avoided in terms of it becoming the main reality future when Rachel Summers in the comics sends Wolverine back in time to stop it from happening. Rachel herself happens to be from a version of the Days of Future Past reality, the main one known as Earth 811, of which now there are actually more than one version of that even alternate reality, just to really confuse you. An alternate version of the Days of Future Past reality, known as Earth 1191, is also the one that Lucas Bishop hails from, where Layla Miller also gets captured and marked with her own M tattoo, which she still has over her eye to this day, from her journey there with Jamie Madrix during the X-Men Second Coming crossover event. Number five, Ultron 1. What if? Ultron 1 is an episode in the animated What If series where we got to reimagine what the world could have been like in the cinematic universe if Ultron had actually won his fight against the Avengers, merging with the body that would become Vision and pretty much decimating all life on Earth and beyond. Only a few survivors remain and even they struggle to survive and save the day. The other question becomes who exactly are they even saving the day for? Most of humanity at this point is pretty much gone. It's an awful future where even the Guardians of the Multiverse later 
disassembled, even struggled to actually straight up defeat Ultron, instead having to be satisfied with merely containing him. Which I mean good enough for now, but who knows, that Ultron could just be like busting out and come in and be like, hey, I'm back. I feel like that's gonna happen at some point. And if it doesn't, I'll be a little disappointed, to be honest. Number four, Deceased. Deceased is DC's apocalyptic zombie-like world, but where instead of it being specifically a zombie outbreak, it's more of an outbreak of the anti-life equation. The anti-life equation affects all the heroes and villains it infects by causing them to basically lose control and be filled with rage. This is the reality where an anti-life infected Wonder Woman goes on a rampage and literally tears Vandal Savage in half. This is also the same reality where the tragic story of Batman and Alfred is actually reversed compared to the main continuity. Instead of Bruce outliving his father figure and his trusted butler Alfred, Alfred is actually the one who survives him. Also, Alfred is a badass in this reality. Alfred is a badass in all realities though, so facts. Number three, Bishop. Lucas Bishop is a time traveler from a dystopian future, and his goal is to travel back in time to stop this unknown factor amongst the X-Men. Okay, so he comes from this dark future and he goes back in time to change it because something bad happens. There's some bad mutant, okay? But this happens where most of the mutant population is depowered by the Scarlet Witch, and then this one child, Hope, Hope Summers, was born, the first mutant born since M-Day. Well, it turns out that this kid is the reason Bishop is going back in time in the first place. This kid would end up taking millions of lives in the six second war. So Bishop thinks the only way to save his future is to travel back in time and take out Hope Summers as a child, but he fails at taking out Hope, but he does take down Cable, creating this new future where Cable is remembered as a hero for protecting the child, and Bishop was actually remembered as the villain. So he was the villain in his own story, and he didn't even know it. Number two, Kronos. If you do the crime, you're doing the time. But if you have enough time, you can plan said crime out in detail, and then maybe you just won't get caught next time. David Clinton first entered DC Comics with The Atom Issue 3. He's mainly a villain for Ray Palmer, aka The Atom. Now, he was a criminal his entire life, and finally, when he was arrested, he was thrown in the slammer, where he had time to think about everything that he's done, all the reasons why he got caught, why his plans didn't work. But maybe he had a bit too much time. He reflected on his past crimes and what he would have done differently if he had planned it better, and then he used his skills and obsessions with timepieces to work nonstop in the prison workshop, where he learned about clocks, time, the mechanisms within, he learned about everything. So when his sentence was finally up, he was released and then became a time-traveling villain. He used all these time-inspired weapons, like an exploding hourglass, a wristwatch with blades instead of hands, and a device that could slow time down. Going by the new name Kronos, in the DC animated universe, Kronos used these devices to go back in time and steal rare relics from the past. At one point, he actually tried stealing a utility belt from the Justice League's watchtower, but when he was interrupted, he made a break for it through the time vortex and Green Lantern, Batman, and Wonder Woman followed him back. Not this time, Kronos. Literally, not this time. Maybe the next one. And finally, number one. Kang. Kang the Conqueror. As Loki gets closer to wrapping up, we're starting to see some higher powers at play here. The Time Lords were just androids. Loki was banished to a realm full of other Lokis. We're not really sure who's calling the shots yet, but signs are pointing to Kang. Jonathan Majors is already set to play the time-traveling villain in the next Ant-Man film, so let's do a quick refresh on him. Kang the Conqueror, aka Nathaniel Richards, made his first appearance in Avengers issue 8 back in 1964. Kang has seen many centuries. He can travel through time and his futuristic suit of armor is built with weapons that can take on any superhero from any timeline that he chooses. He's super powerful and it sure helps when he travels with armies. That often does a trick. So he discovered time travel tech from the 31st century developed by Doctor Doom. And being a descendant of Reed Richards with that brain power, he figured out a way to make it work to his advantage. He traveled back in time initially to become Pharaoh Ramatut, but once he returned to his 31st century, it was now just a wasteland. So he figured, okay, now I'm gonna go all the way back and just rule Earth to prevent said destruction from happening. I feel like Kang is one episode away. We're so close. I can feel it in my soul. Number 10, Future State. In the Future State reality, we saw the DC Universe get pretty bleak. This was a world where Bruce Wayne's Batman was initially presumed dead, while Gotham had become a police state city, where all masks, heroes, and villains were outlawed, where the Justice League was only really a team of co-workers, no longer a group of close friends, never mind a family, where the Flash family was shattered, and where the Teen Titans Academy was destroyed, and the world became an apocalyptic wasteland thanks to the threat of the Four Horsemen. In all its bleakness, there were some bright moments and spots, but it seemed the farther into this future that we went, the darker things got. What makes a future scary? What superheroes do you think have the worst luck with awful and terrifying futures? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Number 8, Age of Apocalypse. What would the world be 
like if Apocalypse succeeded in conquering it? Well, as you may have expected, it would not be great. While Apocalypse, currently in the comics, is not seeking to dominate and rule the world, but is actually focusing on his family, currently kind of in retirement, we should maybe just be grateful for that. Even though, honestly, right now, I think the mutants could actually use his help. Back in the days when Apocalypse was known as one of the most terrifying mutant villains around, we got to explore and imagine a world known as Age of Apocalypse. This alternate Earth, known as Earth 295, is one where Professor Charles Xavier was accidentally killed by his own time traveling son, Legion, which resulted in a divergence from the main timeline. Because Charles wasn't around to form his own X Men team, when Apocalypse came, the world fell. Here, Magneto instead leads his own mutant team, acting as one of the last to stand against Apocalypse. But unfortunately, it's not enough to save this reality from being a horrifying terror show, where many of our favorite heroes end up pulled over to Apocalypse's side of the conflict. Number seven, Ultron. The Avengers Age of Ultron storyline is a lot better than the MCU's version of that. The comic Age of Ultron has better time travel stuff than the movie Endgame does, honestly. I mean, Wolverine goes back in time, he tries to kill Hank Pym so that Ultron's never created, but while he's there, he has to talk to other Avengers who are also back in time on a different mission. It's wild. It's a great time. It starts off with New York City in ruins. Spider-Man is zipping around the city. All these heroes are missing or they're dead. And the only way for the city to survive this apocalypse is by offering superheroes to Ultron, who just rules everything. So She-Hulk and Luke Cage are amongst these survivors, and they have the plans basically to just go in willingly, and then once they're inside, they're gonna break everything apart because they're super strong. But then when they get there, it's not even Ultron that's running the show. It's actually Vision. The Vision is being used as a conduit from future Ultron. So he's safe. You can't just go and punch him and then everything's fine. He's in the future. He's safe. He knows what's gonna happen. It's we're kind of screwed. We can't punch our way out of this. We have Ultron already on top. Ultron is actually barely in the story, funny enough, but the stakes start off raised, so you feel anxious the entire time reading it. It's a great time travel story. Definitely check it out. Number six, reverse flash. Eobard Thon made his debut in Flash issue 139 titled The Black Flash. He was the OG Reverse Flash. He was born in 2451 when his parents genetically engineered him because that's a thing you do in the future and you can engineer your kids to look and be funny and cute, I guess. Okay, cool. But he lacked the social skills in this time to make his parents truly proud. So they decided, you know what? Another son may be the key. A new best friend, great idea, you know? They can pair up and talk and be friends and stuff. Okay, cool. I grew up with siblings, I get it. That second son's name was Robert. He spent so much time trying to keep an eye on Robert and to make his parents proud and to like babysit him, that down the road, his application to study the Speed Force at the Flash Museum was rejected. He was too busy, couldn't even study. So he studied it illegally. <sighs> but he was caught by his brother who is now an officer in the science police. This guy's interesting and a little confusing. So a future version of Eobar traveled through time and prevented his brother from being born and then he was able to study and was in turn this time around admitted to the Flash Museum. Great. But then when Professor Drake was on the verge of proving the existence of the Speed Force, Eobard has trained his whole life for this, so he wanted to collab, but Drake said no. He wanted to do it solo. So he traveled back in time again and eliminated Professor Drake from the equation. So next time around, there's no Drake, there's no problem. Now Eobard is the professor at the Flash Museum and was nicknamed Professor Zoom. Reverse Flash is responsible for the death of Barry Allen's mother and his wife Iris West. He just rips timelines and the Flash's life to pieces. That's his whole thing. Number four, Time Trapper. First appearing in Adventure Comics 317, Time Trapper was introduced to readers as a warlord in the far future who prevents the Legion of Superheroes from traveling into their future with this iron curtain of time. The Time Trapper's main goal basically was to steal this weapon that could absorb every energy in the universe, just this Dyson vacuum full of energy called the Concentrator. Now the team caught wind of this Time Trapper when they could no longer jump more than 30 days in the future. They're like, okay, something's up. There's some higher powers preventing us from being badass. He resides comfortably at the end of time, accompanied by his servants, the Glorith of Baldur. Time Trapper can age anybody he wants, either a couple years or straight to the ashes and bones part. In Action Comics 385, Time Trapper created a temporal force barrier in order to seal a time traveling Superman away from the 20th century. He's that powerful. Number three, Earth Z. Sometimes referred to as Earth Z, Earth 2149 is the reality where a zombified sentry first caused an outbreak to happen. The outbreak would not only threaten the general public of this whole universe, but also go on to infect many superpowered beings 
Titans as well, both heroes and villains, and it would also kind of spill into other universes too. It's widely considered to be one of the darkest realities in all of comics. This is a reality where Black Panther, T'Challa, is slowly devoured by his former colleagues and friends. Freaks me out every time. Every time I think about it, I'm like, no! Where Spider-Man ends up eating both his dear Aunt May and beloved MJ. It's a really messed up and bleak reality basically, and every time I go back to it, I'm almost immediately forced to recoil back from these issues and this world. That's just how gruesome it is. It's really intense. Number 2. Ruins. Oof. I cannot believe this one is not at the top of this list. Honestly though, it was a hard decision to make when it came down to these last few. Some might not think of Marvel's Ruins as a future as it is set in modern day sort of, but it's still an alternate reality that never came to pass in the main continuity based on the original world of Marvel, which actually you know started technically back in the 60s, although that's kind of weird. So I think we can still consider Ruins like taking a glimpse through a dark crystal ball into an impossibly cruel potential future for our heroes and our villains. In this reality, super powers are interpreted more literally, meaning that they are less blessings than curses that cause people great harm, with them becoming more monsters, prisoners, victims, or just like straight up villains than actual altruistic heroes most days. Number 1. Batman in Bethlehem Batman in Bethlehem has to be one of the worst futures out there, but that is also part of what makes it so compelling and so interesting. In this reality, Damian Wayne takes up the cape and cowl, following in his father's footsteps. But after the death of Nightwing, who actually went on to become Batman before, Damien did. Damien decides the best way to approach being Batman because of Nightwing's death is by doing things uh, kind of his own way. In other words, he no longer holds himself back from killing. And more than that in this reality, Damien also makes a deal with the devil to basically protect Gotham no matter what, offering his soul in exchange for immortality and superior healing powers which allows him to act as Gotham's vengeance pretty much forever. Or at least for as long as, you know, Gotham lasts. Eventually, Gotham ends up confronting a zombie-like outbreak when most of its citizens become infected with Joker venom and the monster serum. Gotham would then end up quarantined before being nuked, wiping it off the face of the map, with Damien surviving the strike due to his immortality and healing factor that he had bargained for.